Never say can't. It's my kind of motto. Pulled out a liability waiver. <laughs> this week, we're headed out on the old Kettle Valley Railway. Chasing history, telling stories, hitting jumps, and making new friends the only way that I know how. Pushing some trucks to the limit. My name is Sean, and this is the Story Till Now. Brought to you by Epic Adventure Outfitters. White Rock Dodge. Rip Superchargers. And in part by... So my name is Bruce Cook uh, from Kelowna, BC, and uh, I guess I would be considered a freestyle motocross athlete. January 3rd, 2014, I was set to uh, attempt the world's first double front flip on a dirt bike. Uh, under rotated a little bit, slid off the back of my bike, basically folded in back, or folded in half backwards, back dropped onto the heel of my dirt bike boot, which exploded my T11 vertebrae. Um, and that left me paralyzed. Right from that moment, I realized A, I was still alive, B, I could still move my upper body and everything, and um, it was kind of like, all right, let's, uh, you know, life's not over. After a night of peaceful solo camping, I'm headed through the snowy mountains to Kelowna, BC to Bruce Cook's house to check out his rigs and head out for a weekend of epic adventure. What's up guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm out here in Kelowna today with my friend Bruce and Denny and we're gonna go out and do some wheeling. Bruce has got this uh, pretty nice JK here. He's gonna give us a little walk around. So it is a 2015 uh, JK. What I like is it's kind of subtle, doesn't look like there's a lot done to it, but you start looking, I got long arm kit, coilovers, pro rocks, um, RCVs, kind of everything I can do to uh, prevent myself from getting stuck. 37s on uh, 17 inch bead locks. Uh, 12,000 pound winch up front, pretty standard stuff. Definitely has more kilometers off road than it does on road and it's done really well and I've been happy with it. I assume you have to do some kind of custom modification of yeah. this for your particular driving situation. Yeah, let's, uh, pretty basic actually. First thing is the uh, foot plate, which you can buy one that bolts to the floor, but I just made one out of plywood so you can move it so anyone can drive it. Um, just keeps the feet out of the pedals and then just the hand controls which it's just two rods that bolt to the brake pedal and the gas pedal and then you just push down for gas and then forward for the brake pedal. People always kind of think it's sketchy but you've got finer motor control in your yeah, hands it looks like than you'd you almost your be, feet. So it's technically It looks like it'd be safer. a little bit better yeah. Yeah. control honestly. Yeah, no, it, it, it's <laughs> awesome. It allows me to still get out there so it's good enough for me. So Bruce says he's going to take me for a ride in his uh, Razor. Yep. He's got a, a track or something out in the back and he just pulled out a liability waiver. Signature far right. Signature. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I signed a liability waiver. I've got goggles. So, I have no idea what we're doing, but uh, it sounds like it's going to be a good time. It will. Back the harness? Away. Yeah. Always am. Sean should be making it here any second now. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Then it takes away from the experience. So. You know, if he puts on the Nitro Circus gloves, it's going to be uh, <laughs> a good 
ride. <laughs> so in addition to the track over here where we were just doing jumps, we've got uh, a lifted limo. Have you jumped the limo? Not yet. And he's got a, a big monster truck over here. So this is my first project on the lift down at the new shop. Yeah, it's the uh, Mickey Thompson Baja Pros. I actually won the coilovers, and so that was nice. kind of my motivation to get going. They're way too big. They're 17 inch coilovers. <laughs> Gotta so do something it's... with some free coilovers. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a truck sitting there, so. You're not gonna jump that, right? <laughs> I'll jump. I'll jump. Yes. Yeah. Really? I, yes. I jumped my Jeep off that one. 55 feet. 55 foot. I've jumped jump? a lot of things off that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've been off-roading since like even growing up on my parents farm it was like off-roading the the garden tractor right. and like in the front end loader like building little courses and um, I got my first Jeep uh, CJ7 from a scrapyard for like $300 for uh, or when I was 13 and uh, the idea was to fix it up and, and drive it when I was 16 but it didn't even make it that long <laughs> because uh, yeah, we're just mud bogging it and then jumping it in the backyard. All right, we just got to the bottom of the trail that we're going to head up here. Weather's looking a little bit better. Some blue sky up there, so we're hoping to get up into some views. A lot of washboard, pretty worn out, but yeah, we're going to the KVR, which is the Kettle Valley Railway. It was built like 100 years ago and actually goes all the way down to the coast. You know the awesome. Othello tunnels? Yeah. That's part of this. So yeah, yeah. I've, I've tried to get into some of the tunnels that you're not supposed to get into, yeah. but uh, yeah. never never managed to do it. Yeah, so it's super mellow to begin with, but I mean, ton of history and the views are second to none. So this is the KBR. I still, it just blows my mind that this was all by hand. Dynamite, you know, horses, sleds. Anytime there's some history where I go, it just gets me super excited. Yeah, I love it. And I always just kind of like put myself in that era and like just picture what would be happening around me. like you're on a train track just the way the road winds and the way it's uh, the rocks are carved out it's about the closest I'll ever get probably to driving a train taking a detour off the railway trail we're gonna make our way to a lookout point the road to get there includes some deep muddy puddles which won't really get any complaints from me Muddy hole action. Gotta love it.
some elevation near the lookout, wind was picking up and the visibility became limited. The temperatures were around minus three. It was definitely really cold. It's really cold out here on this trail. We are gonna uh, probably call it a night. There's an old railway station that's been converted to a lodge. And uh, Bruce set us up with a cabin there for tonight. So we're gonna head there. Apparently they have some good food. So, see you there. How do you zoom on this one? Yeah, I did that the other day. <laughs> it's not pinching. <laughs> My iPhone's broken. <laughs> we are going. Oh. Here. <laughs> oh, oh. Somewhere on that chair. <laughs> yeah, so it's on the back of Hunter's Range, which is a really popular snowmobile area. Just figuring out our route for tomorrow, looking at this big map here. We can figure out how to cover some ground with only a little bit of pavement. we'll get right back into our adventure but I just wanted to take a minute to show you the inside of this awesome cabin here in Death Valley where we're gonna be in our next video which we've been able to light up with these cool lights thanks to the Jackery Explorer 1000 as you guys know I take this unit with me on all my trips and really no self-respecting overlander goes out without portable electricity in a box am I right Black Friday is coming and Jackery is gonna be having a sale where you can save up to $400 on all products site-wide at jackery.com. The sale is gonna be happening from November 26th to November 29th and any purchases that you make through the link in the description below does help to support and fund our adventures, which I really appreciate. So thank you Jackery for sponsoring this video and make sure you check out the sale at jackery.com this week. It was literally the moment I was on the stretcher getting wheelie, wheeled out of the arena. Like you always kind of picture what you want your last show to be like or what it's going to be like. And you want to go out on top, not on a stretcher. So it was kind of, once I figured out I could move my arms and, and my brain was, well, as good as it ever was, <laughs> which isn't saying much, but um, yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna get back on the bike one way or another and, and I'm gonna figure out how to backflip it. Nine months after my injury, Rode my dirt bike for the first time. A month after that, landed the first backflip. And uh, yeah, it's been touring with Nitro Circus, a couple hundred shows now all over the world, adapting everything I can and just kind of getting back to life as as much as I could as before as possible. Like, you know, just yeah. getting out in the Jeep and whatever it is, like equipment, figuring it away and just, uh, there's always a way. So you just figure it out and get back to it. This morning had a nice cozy sleep in this uh, cabin here we're gonna head out and we got a lot of ground to cover today we're gonna head up a mountain pretty high so that should be interesting and check out some uh, railway trestles possibly so more history and stuff should be fun
some cool old stuff here from the uh, the old railway station, including these old wood-fired stoves. We had one of these in the cabin last night, which was cool. We used that to heat it up. It's nice and comfy. As the sun was coming back up, we made our way back onto the KVR. I just think back to like riding that train through this, like it would just be so beautiful. Especially this part right here, and then it opens up. Chugga, 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 chugga. Woo, woo. You really can't help but feel like a bit of a kid on this road and make some train sounds as you're driving down it. I don't have a snowflake on my tires, so I think I'm gonna turn around. Bruce, if you want, I've got a Sharpie. I can draw a snowflake on your tires. Problem solved. So we just pulled up to one of the old train trestles, which obviously you can't drive on here, but, but we're gonna go check it out. Yeah, I think Bruce and uh, some of his family have driven across from back in the day. No sides on him, of course, so. That would've been so cool. A little more nerve. This is so cool. You can see the train ties here and they've just put some boards along it so you can walk across it easier. The Kettle Valley Railway has 18 wooden trestles to traverse the deep Mira Canyon. After the railway was abandoned, they fell into disrepair, but in recent years, they've been restored for use by hikers and cyclists. You're no longer able to drive the trestles in this section, but we can get close enough to check them out. From here, we'll have to put in some miles on the trail. Our goal for the day is to get as high up as we can on the mountain, knowing that reaching the top will likely not be realistic with the current snow conditions. So already the track here has gotten pretty rutted out uh, just from these guys going up and compressing the snow. My truck's pretty heavy. I'm aired down to 8 PSI, but uh, I can't get up the hill. So chains are not gonna do any good here. Just gonna dig in, make a hole. This is probably a meter deep underneath the snowpack, so. All right, let's do it. Did we disconnect? Yeah, I'm not sure what let go, but something. Okay, ready for a bump? Let's do it. Go, go, go. I'm gonna have to call the city again and complain about it's not being plowed. Could have at least thrown some salt down.
Bruce and Denny have much more experience in the snow out in this area, which is drier than what we get on the coast and a little bit different to drive in. It was impressive watching them push forward in these conditions. never say can't. It's my kind of motto. We just grew up with that. Like it's it, as kids, if we couldn't do something, you know, we thought we couldn't do something and we said, I can't do this to my dad, you know, he'd, he'd get mad. And well, sure you can. You just need to figure out a way to do it. And like, maybe you need to ask for help. Maybe you need to do some ropes, pulleys, whatever it is, but you can get it done. And so it's like, it kind of is fitting for anything. Like, um, obviously there's things that you physically can't do, but for the most part, if you want something bad enough, you can figure out a way. Don't take things for granted because uh, as soon as you lose them, you realize how much is gone. So it's just kind of being grateful every day and, and just keeping that mindset of never say can't. There's, there's always a way. It might take you longer, it might be harder, it might be more expensive, but if you want it bad enough, then you can do it. You were saying something earlier, Bruce, uh, if it starts snowing, it's a good thing, right? Yeah. Avalanche warning sign. That's a good sign. Yeah, well, absolutely. I'd uh, make sure to get a picture of that too. Just to uh, show our dedication to the cause of safety second. Just a heads up, there's photo radar ahead, so don't go too fast. it doesn't start snowing. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> After pushing to nearly 2,000 meters, we took a good opportunity to turn around when it presented itself, before it was too late in the day. It's been several hundred kilometers that we've traveled on dirt roads over the last couple of days, and it's been a lot of fun. I just like to have fun, and I think fun is so underrated these days. People get so caught up in jobs and, and stress and money and houses, and I think as you get older, fun goes out the window, and there's no real reason for that. And I, I don't know, I'm just a big kid, and just love laughing with buddies and, and having fun. All right, guys, had a great adventure today up on the mountain the last couple of days, actually. Really appreciate you guys taking me out around here. Had appreciate a blast. You. Appreciate you coming out. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you want to see more adventures with uh, Danny and Bruce. Absolutely. I'll be commenting, yes, for sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> me too. More of that. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you guys go subscribe to Bruce's channel. Link's in the description. Check out some crazy jumping videos and stuff like that. And I'll catch you in the next one.